The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... G. Marshall, your host for another story of the macabre. We range everywhere, searching out unusual experiences from such different sources as the subconscious, the world of apparitions, and the occupants of space. Our object is to reflect, as in a mirror, what may lie behind what we appear to be, because no man is that. This is a legendary Japanese ghost story, thousands of years old when customs and rules of conduct were inflexible. As Hagagawa Shintaburo found out, Karma! Karma! Fate! Yes, my young friend, fate! Your karma destines you to suffer. I love Suyo! You may not love her. She is the daughter of a samurai of the highest elitist class. Put her from your mind. If you do not, Hagawara... You invite both your deaths. Heed my warning. Our mystery story, The Golden Amulet, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Tony Roberts. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the Sinus Medicines, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The religion of Gautama Buddha, born in the 6th century B.C., spread from northern India to Ceylon, Burma, Siam, China, and to Japan. Its ultimate goal is nirvana, the final emancipation from the necessity of transmigration. Unless nirvana is attained, the doctrine of impermanence applies to all things. And even the gods are liable to the effects of fate and of transmigration. Buddhism denies a permanent self. These beliefs, fate and transmigration, underlie what happened to Hagawara Shinzaburo. A lovely villa, Dr. Shijo. The lady Tsuyu lives here alone? Not entirely. She has... Uh the door is opening. A plea to enter this humble house. Dr. Shijo? <laughs> Kone, how nice to see you again. Uh, this is my young friend Hagawara Shinzaburo. Oh, you are welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, follow me, please. Humble, did she say, doctor? It's elegant. That teakwood chest is beautiful. So are the tables and the copper bowls and the garden behind. Ah, Dr. Shisho, my old friend. You are as beautiful as ever to you. Uh, uh, with your permission, I ask Hagawara to walk with me. May I introduce him? Uh, by your dress, I see that you are a samurai. But a novice. I am honored to make your acquaintance, Lady Tsuyo. Uh, lady, by breeding only. I am unmarried. But thank you. Tsuyo. I will serve tea on the patio in the garden. Go with her, Dr. Shiso. You are old friends. Yes, yes. We have much to talk over. You and Connie live alone in this villa? Because I live apart from my father, Yedo. My mother went to another existence. He remarried. I do not like my stepmother. He provided me with this villa and a servant, old Connie. You see no one? No one unescorted. My father is a Hamamoto. I understand. A samurai of the highest class. Does he visit you? Mm, from time to time. Otherwise, I am alone. And the future? I cannot divine my karma. I can. And mine. From the moment I saw you... Perhaps we should go to the patio and join Dr. Shisho. In good time, Suyo. For this moment, just let me look at you. Uh, 
your mistress looks very well, Connie. In health, but not in heart, Doctor. It is wrong for so beautiful a young girl to be confined in this villa. Her father has found no one suitable for her? None. You have today made a mistake, Dr. Shisho. That young man. You noticed, too? He is struck by her. And your mistress? I know the signs of love, Doctor. But that cannot be, Connie. Her father would disown her. And Hagawasa would be killed. I have spoken when I should have remained silent. I beg your forgiveness. Oh, you cannot control your heart any more than I can mine, Hagawara. The moment I saw you, it was stolen away. By the gods, I swear that I love you. I defy them and your high place in proclaiming my love. And I love you. If you do not visit me again, Hagawara, I will die. Hagawara, my poor young friend. Months have gone by, Dr. Shijo. Months since I walked with you to Suyu's villa. I cannot. I must not visit her without an escort. I have been tempted, but I will not compromise her. Now that, at least, is to your credit. Suyu's father would disown her, and you would be killed. I do not know where karma leads you. I know you suffer. Karma. I love to you. No one can defy his fate. Please. I beg you, Shijo. Walk with me to her villa. I will walk there alone. I am determined to see her again. You cannot imagine... I, too, was young. Then uh, help me. Please. Yes, master? You and your husband, Tomaso, have attended me for more than three score moons, Monet. That is true, Master. You are a fine person. It is a pleasure to serve a considerate young samurai, Master Hagawara. You are content? Yes. You live in a small hut, Monet. Do you never long for better? Fate has determined what Tomaso and I do and where we live. As a Japanese and Buddhist, you know that, Master. This existence was determined for us, and yours for you. You believe in transmigration? The soul passes to another body until the end of time, Master. So, what each of us is now was determined by a previous existence. Tomaso and I are servants. You are a young samurai warrior. It is not for anyone to question what the gods have decreed. You know all this. I am in love, Monet. We know. With a lady named Tsuyo. The daughter of the mighty warlord Yedo? Oh, she belongs to a caste apart from yours, master. We love each other. I must see her. I want you to carry a message to her. I cannot, master. You shall. You are asking me to risk my life. If I am discovered by the lady's father... There is no risk. She lives apart from him. Here is my message. Take it to Lady Tsuyo. What is it, wife? I am ill, Tomaso. See this message. He has ordered me to take it to Tsuyo. Must I obey him? The master risks three lives. Shall I speak to him? Hodawara denounces his karma and defies the gods. We must ask a priest to intercede. No, Tomaso. The master would be angry. We are but servants. We do not have the right to interfere. Go to Dr. Shijo. He is Hagawara's friend. I will. And I'll take him the master's message for to you. The doctor is a wise man. Let him decide what is right to be done. Perhaps he will consult Musai, the fortune teller. It is said that she is gifted in reading the future. <laughs> For 
for us, it is always night. Can we walk in the night? If you so choose, can you find the home of Hagawara Singamuro? If we wander about, perhaps we may. <gasps> and lead the way. Where are we, Okoni? It is a field of dreams. Yes. Is this a dream? No, my lady. I, I don't understand. My villa. My father. Dr. Shizu. Hagawara. Where are they? Among the living, so you. We are not. We are dead. Yes, my lady. We are prisoners of our tomb until the night of the festival of the dead. Then, as the gods decree, we will be ready to pass into our future existence. And Hagawara. He lives. He lives a life of death, Okoni. I must go to him until the night of the festivals of the dead, when the peony lanterns light the way for returning spirits. They will not be able to see you, my lady. Not see me? Oh, no, of course not. We're dead. Are we really dead, Okoni? Our bodies lie in that tomb to you. But I see you as clearly as I saw you in life. What you see is not real. We see each other, but we are not real. We are ghosts, do you? Monet? Yes, Master? Did you deliver my message? No, Master. How dare you disobey me? To protect you, Master. The Lady Suyu is forbidden. She is from a higher existence than you, Master. A higher existence is love. What the gods have decreed shall be. The love of which you speak is a venomous snake, and it will kill you. Where is the message I gave you? Tomaso has it. Return it to me at once. When it is returned, both you and Tomaso... I'll dismiss. Master, please. I am tempted to kill you for your disobedience. We have served you faithfully. A samurai has compassion. Get out. I am not afraid of Suyu's father. Let him abandon her. We will go away far from his reach. He would hunt you down. I will fight to the death for Suyu. You won't have to, Hagawara. Your trouble is over. Just what does that mean? Tsuyu and Okoni are dead. I don't believe you. I don't believe they're dead. It's a trick. Or you've been warned by Yedo, her father. You're protecting yourself from him because you brought us together. It is no trick. I'll go to the villa myself. At your own risk. When you come to your senses, I hope you will apologize to Monet and Tomaso. Perhaps even to me. You... You have not lied to me, Doctor. You are not deceiving me. The cleverest of lies lasts only a week. I bring what should be good news to you. You are safe at last. Because so you is dead. <laughs> philosophy is strange to us. We do not think of death as good news, but it is to a Buddhist, because one existence is followed by another, which may be much better. That is what Hagawara Shinzaburo has been taught. This Buddhist concept is deeply ingrained in him, but so was his intense love for the Lady Tsuyu. With her death, you might think that this legendary story has come to an end. It is only beginning. I'll return shortly with Act Two. We're dealing here with an ancient Japanese story about what karma, which is fate, has predestined for Hagawara Shinzaburo, who loved deeply, but like others after him, not wisely. 
I have always thought that those terms deny each other. Love is one phenomenon, one of feeling. Wisdom is the opposite of feeling. Now, how can love, profound love, admit wisdom to give judgment? The former makes that impossible. Love is a kind of magic, and it is not to be evaluated. It is the next afternoon, late, and Tommaso enters his hut. Undo the bundle, Monet. We have been restored. Restored? We do not have to leave. He has repented. Sit down, Tommaso. You are as pale as the mountain snow. I have received a great fright. What? Lady Tsuyu and Koni are dead. Oh. Hagawara became frantic. He left the house and I followed him. He went to the villa? He searched for it, but it is not there. The villa is a ruin. How can that be? And why did Lady Tsuyu and Koni die? I cannot answer either question, my wife. She died for love. And Koni for sorrow. What of Hagawara? He wanders the paths and fields like a wild thing. Oh. I kept him in sight and then spoke to him. He fell to the ground and wept. Then he forgave me and you and pleaded with me to return to his service. Where is the master now? I could not drag him from the cemetery. He is torn by grief. Thomas, though, we must bring him home. He cannot remain there through the night. He is a young man with a hot temper. He may go to Tsuyu's father and demand an explanation. Grief often reverts to anger. Yedo would kill him. That is what Hagawara may wish. lie before this tomb through the night. Your weakness invites contempt. I cannot believe I have been so cursed. It is not for man to question his fate. This is yours. Face it. Ah, come now. We will see you home. But so you... She is dead. Drive her image from your mind. Grief is weak and sacrilegious. Your behavior is unmanly. You're tempting the gods. Continue, and in your next existence, you may not even be a man. Master? Uh, yes, Monet. I have brought you tea. Thank you. Am I permitted to say, Hagawara Shinzaburo, that Tomaso and I have admired your return to this life? Thank you. What is your pleasure this night? My pleasure? It is the night of the Festival of the Dead. Ah! In past years... Of course. We hung out the peony lanterns to guide the spirits back to us. And we hang them out tonight? Yes, yes. Of course. Uh, perhaps... It would be better not to hang the lantern. Have no fear, Monet. I loved a woman. I cannot love her ghost. Is there more that I can do for you, Hagawara? No, Tomaso. 
I will enjoy my evening tea here in the garden and retire early. The peony lanterns look lovely. It is a sacred night, Master. I have hung one on my hut. I will bid you good night. Good night, Thomas. Agawara? Your name of Buddha. Who? Who calls? It is Julia. I am behind the hedge that screens your garden. Julia? Is it? Is it really you? I have waited many moons for you to visit me again and to embrace me. I thank the gods for their mercy. You real. I feel you and hear you speak, my beautiful Suyo. I don't understand this at all. Shijo told me that... that you were dead. He also told me that you had gone on to another existence. Then he did lie to me. Why did Shijo lie to us, my darling? Out of fear of my father. He would have abandoned me and had you murdered. When he suspected that I had given my heart to someone, he threatened me. Oh, I did not reveal your name. He drove me and Okoni from the villa and destroyed it. Why did you not come to me at once? Because it was many moons since you first came to see me. I was afraid that you had forgotten me. My devotion was immediate. This will be your home. We will be married, and then we will go far away. For my own sake, I do not fear your father, but I do fear for you. Come to you. Mone. Oh, my wife. What is it? You look as if you'd seen a ghost, Thomaso. I I have. Two, in fact. And worse. She she came back from the dead. And Okoni with her? Soon after I said goodnight to the master. I saw them lurking outside the hedge which encloses the garden of small trees. There they were. Through you. And according. You, you really, his father? Did they look like ghosts? Oh, they looked like living persons. Oh. So you called to the master and he took them inside the house. I crept toward it and heard them pledge their love. Then, in the bedroom. Yes? I. I hesitate to tell you, Monet. You. You saw what? They were in the sandalwood bed in the master's room. Well? Hagawara was in the... the embrace of a woman who was dead. But Master Hagawara. Yes, Tomaso? Yusai pays her respect to you, Master. Yusai? That is a great honor. There is no wiser woman than Yusai, the fortune teller. Show her in. By your leave, Master, I sent for her. You? You sent for her? Because of what occurred last night. Nothing occurred last night. What have you imagined? Were you sudden with warm wine? No, Master. I saw it, all of it. I told Monet. We agreed that I should approach you, Sai, and she has come to see you. A blessing on your house. Hagawara Shintamburo. Oh, you sigh. Your presence graces my humble dwelling. May I do more than that? You have no memory of what occurred on the night of the festival of the dead. We hung out the peony lanterns. I had tea on the patio in the garden and went early to bed. Mm. Alone. That is an odd question, you sigh. You know that Suyo and Okone are dead. Yes. They returned last night. Thomas O overheard Suyu conversing with you. He is mad. Later he saw you in the embrace of a dead woman. Now, ah, ah, get down, Hagawara. The blood has drained from your face. The peony lanterns lighted for her the way to your villa. I slept with Suyu. You have embraced a dead woman, a ghost. There is a sin, a foul sin. You agree that Suyu is dead? I have laid flowers at her tomb day after day. But she returned to you last night. And she may return again. If you admit her to your house, you will die a hideous death. I can foresee it. Akawara, will you 
very essential me. I... Yes, you say, but I have no memory of her visit. I have dreamed about her constantly, but I have no memory of, of what Thomas saw. You will obey me. Yes. I have brought a sacred golden amulet. You are to wear it at all times. Will you do that? Yes. Equally important are the Ophada. Religious threats. What am I to do with them? I have provided enough Ophada to cover every entrance to your grounds and house. Thomas O will place them over doors, windows, and across paths. They will prevent the return of Tuyu and Oconi. When the sun sets, you will remain inside. How long will I be so confined? By the end of one moon, the ghost of Tuyu will have despaired and will be seen here no more. Oh, I am so happy, oh, Koji. Soon night will fall. Oh, then we will return to Hagawara. Oh, I long to embrace him again. Nothing can prevent us from being united. He will marry me. And we will go far away. Oh, you will come with us, Okun. Thank you, my lady. I am bound to Hagawara. I was in life. I shall be in death. We shall be joined together forever when he crosses over and joins me. The spirit world is present in different forms in all religions. In Japan, the predominant religion is Buddhism. A disciple dedicates himself to reach nirvana, the state of enlightenment. A Buddhist believes in transmigration, the never-ending resting place for the soul. Karma, or fate, determines the form in which the soul is contained. Sin is the defiance of what has been ordained, and Hagawara has committed it. More when I return with Act Three. The story of unrequited love is as old as time. We accept such disappointment by rationalizing that it was not to be. A Buddhist, however, can explain it. It's because of karma, fate, which the gods determine. And there is contentment in that belief. One's karma cannot be changed. A person who tries to oppose the gods is doomed. For the moment, Hagawara is safe from the ghost of Tsuyu, although their love for one another persists. Tsuyu approaches Hagawara's villa late at night. My lady, oh no, the door and windows are closed, and there are Osada everywhere. Hagawara has barred himself against us. I must see him. We cannot enter a house protected by religious facts. He has abandoned us. So you... I won't believe that, Okoni. He loves me. Someone has forced him to hang out the Osada. Dr. Caesar, perhaps. Or the witch who can look into the future. You try. He has persuaded Hagawara that you are unclean. He is an unfaithful lover, your handsome young samurai. I shall see him. He is not worthy of your love, my lady. Abandon him. And let us return to the tomb. There we will wait patiently until we pass into a new existence. Not without Hagawara. There is nothing we can do. But there is something that can be done for me, Okoni. You will appear to Tomaso and Mone, his servant, and threaten them. They are simple people. Out of sight, they will help me. What shall I do, wife? She terrified me appearing that way. From what you I said, Hagawara will die if he again admits Suyo to his house. And in his future existence, he might be an animal. Oh. I cannot permit that to happen to the young master. Then you have made up your mind. You will save him and be yourself condemned. Hagawara would take care of us. Okoni also threatened you. I also like our young master. But my karma leads me to say, Tomaso, that I shall not be condemned by the ghost of Suyu and Okoni. Then you sacrificed the life of Hagawara. 
So be it. My husband. He is so young. We will get something in exchange. Haunting dreams. For gold. I will endure them. Gold? Okone makes demands on us. If we sacrifice the master, so you and Okone must do something for us. I will not sacrifice him for nothing. Demand 100 rio in gold. By the gods. They will deliver it. Then we will remove the Ofada. That is a fortune. We deserve it for what we are about to do. Go to the tomb in the cemetery and make our demand. I'm not alone, wife. I lack the courage to go there alone. Then I will go with you. Or do you want me to go there alone? Perhaps we should first consult Dr. Shijo or Yusai. No. They would understand our fear. They would protect Hagawara. No, Tomaso. We will do what Okoni demanded. You remain here. I will go to the tomb. They demand 100 Rio in gold. We cannot obtain it, so you. My father Yendo has gold. Could we appear to him? Yes. Well, then obtain it from him. Our souls are in limbo, awaiting another existence. Go to him and plead for the Rio. See that it will free us from our aimless wandering. He will understand. I will try, my lady. Then appear to Tomaso and Monet. Tell them where they will find the gold. When they have it, they must open Hagawara's house to us. Yes, my lady. And once they have obeyed us and have their 100 Rio, we will make certain that they will never enjoy the pleasures it could bring them. That will be within my power. Go now to the house of Yedo. You have drunk much wine, Hagawara. Out of boredom, Tomaso. It robs the mind of thought, and I do not want to think. I am confined to my house for a whole moon. My friends will not understand. They will see the old father, Master, and then they will know. Mm. Why is it that I cannot remember the Lady Tsuyu's visit? I really do not believe you saw her with me, Tomaso. But it is the truth. It frightened me greatly. That is why I ran to Usai. She foresaw that your karma binds you to death. And that is why even time cannot make my memory of Tsuyu fate? Yes, Master. You really believe this, Tomaso? I am a Buddhist. I, too. I respect you, Tomaso. Thank you. I will finish my wine and then retire. I should be able to sleep now. Shall I see you to your bedroom, Hakawara? No, no. I will manage by myself. Good night, good Tomaso. Mone, we begin now. You remove the old father from the outside. I will wait till Hagawara is asleep. Then I must take the golden amulet from him. And if he awakens? It is unlikely. He has had much wine. Hagawara. Oh, who in the name? I have come to you again. It is you. Or do I dream? I have drunk too much wine. No, it is not a dream. Thomas Joe, remove the old father. And Oconee and I walk into your house again. Oh, will you take me into your arms, my love? My life is yours. We shall be bound together for eternity. Nothing shall ever part us. I pledge my life to you. Good morning to you, Tommaso. I noticed that your father has been taken down. Usai told me their purpose. Your doing, Tommaso. Your faithfulness will be rewarded. I wish for no reward, Dr. Fijo. You will receive one nevertheless. Uh, may I enter? The door stands open. Shall we awaken Hagawara, or do you suppose he has gone with flowers to the tomb? The bedroom door is closed. Ah, doctor. What have the gods? Ah, I feel faint. <laughs> Can 
Can you hear me, Tomaso? How did I come here to my bed? Dr. Shijo helped me carry you from the house. You did not enter the bedroom? He barred me from it. He said when you opened the door, you were struck as if by a jagged streak of lightning and fell to the floor. Oh, we have committed a great evil, Monet. Hagawara is dead. As we knew he would be. We have the hundred Rio in gold. It runs with his blood. You discovered him dead? Yes, dead. In the embrace of a woman's skeleton. His expression was hideous. The skeleton clung to him. golden amulet. Yusai has told me that ghosts who have wronged in temporal life wander in search of redress. Who had harmed to you? I do not know, Doctor. No one. Selfishly, she rejected the second wife of Yedo and clung to the small villa he built for her. Against custom and common sense, she rejected the proper suitors and fell in love with Hagawara. He loved her deeply, Doctor. He courted death. And it has come to him. As it will come to you and to Tomaso. What karma awaits both of you, I cannot guess. But you are sure to suffer for exposing Hagawara. You have the hundred rio in gold. How? Oh. How oh, you, you know about that? Your side does. I, I have them, Doctor. You will spend them on a tomb for your late master. Oh, but if you refuse, I will go to Tuyu's father who provided the gold and left it at her tomb where you collected it. So you give me no choice. There is none. Should Yedo learn that his rears went into your grasping hands, your life would be forfeit. See to it that the tomb is built. Have it placed next to that of the lady Tuyu. It is a fine tomb, worthy of the young samurai. It is to your future credit, Tomaso and Monet. The gods are not forgiving. They are just. I, I am the cause of Hagawara's death. I mourn for him. I rejoice for him. He has gone to another existence. May it be happy for him. Oh, do not grieve. It is written that there is no permanence in life. 
Agawara's karma bound him to death from a previous existence. His removal from this life is no more important than a grain of sand to the ocean. Our souls are eternal. And so we come to the end of this legendary Japanese ghost story. A love story as tragic as Romeo and Juliet. With a difference. Suyu and Hagawara were fated by their gods never to fulfill their love. Caste and custom exist to this day. Buddhism and its spirit world are the Japanese religion. And this was one of its treasured legends. I'll return shortly. Certain men, such as Buddha, have gone beyond science. Inspired divinely to understand life and then to write down precepts which lead to oneness with the source of life. His converts achieve tranquility because they believe that there is no permanence to life, but that the life of the soul is everlasting. It is a viewpoint that can bring personal peace in a turbulent world. Our cast included Tony Roberts, Evie Juster, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.